A blessed afternoon, dearest brothers and sisters in Christ. If you are blessed today, I invite you to turn to your neighbor. Yes, that's the person to your right and to your left. And give him or her your sweetest smiles and your warmest handshake. Thank you very much. I hope if you were not feeling so great earlier, you are feeling much better now. I'm Kathleen Flores, and joining me here in front is one of my students, Brother Ezra Elia. Our warmest welcome to all of you, whether you are a student, a faculty member, a staff, an administrator, or a guest, and whether you have come here at PIC or have joined us online, we praise God for your presence. Indeed, may God be praised and glorified through this week of prayer with a the theme, Embrace, Embrace. Who, Who Am, am I, I That, that God, God Cares? At some point, we've all asked ourselves that question. We have grappled with our place in this world, with our purpose, and with the idea of whether we truly matter. We hope that during this week of prayer, you have found answers and clarity to your uncertainties. Most importantly, we hope that you have found God. This past few days, I have been blessed with thought-provoking insights and quotable quotes through a week of prayer speaker, Pastor Campbell. What about you, Ezra? What specific insight, reflection, or lesson or reflection that stood out the most for you? That is a great question. But if I were to choose one specific lesson from our session this morning, what stood out for me is that God puts people for a season and a reason. Sometimes, God permits a relationship to last only for a season for a specific reason, which is to make us mature and better for, the, for His chosen one for us. Love goes beyond the, the sophistry of physical attraction. It is both personal and spiritual. It is holistic and formative. The search is long and hard, but keep in mind that if we allow the virtue of patience to flourish, God does the choosing for us, one who is true and whole. Great insight. Thank you for sharing, Ezra. I am now excited as to how the Lord will work out your love life in the future. Meanwhile, the center of our study this Thursday afternoon is found in Luke 15, focusing on the parable of the lost son. As we listen to God's word through Pastor Campbell, I hope that we will allow the Holy Spirit to work in each of our hearts, to teach us, to rebuke us, to correct us, and to train us in righteousness. To help us focus and maximize our worship experience, here are a few things we need to take note and observe. Let us refrain from using our gadgets and remain seated during the appeal song. For your prayer requests, kindly drop them on the bowls available at the lobby. You might also be interested to avail our Week of Prayer t-shirts. Kindly check the screen for details. Please note that today is the last day to send in your order, including your cash payments, or else your order will be forfeited. Visit also the social media pages of Campus Youth Ministries to stay in the loop. Lastly, attendance will not be checked during Friday sessions. However, you are certainly encouraged to join our final week of prayer sessions. Before we take our seats, allow me to share with you a quote from a Christian apologist, C.S. Lewis, from his book, Mere Christianity. Look for yourself, and you will find in the long run only hatred, loneliness, despair, rage, ruin, and decay. But look for Christ, and you will find Him 
and with him, everything else thrown in. Please stand as we sing our theme song, My Savior Cares. Does Jesus care when my heart is pained with a wound no song can I'd like to start this testimony by telling everyone that I am a sinner of the world. I'm not proud of the sins that I have done, but I am proud of how I managed to get out from the slump that I got stuck in before. My story goes back to when I was in junior high school. I was a typical teenager of the world. What I mean by the world is by the sinful world. I got confused on what is right that is in accordance to God's will and the right that is accepted and promoted by the world. I justified some actions that led me astray. Every time that I commit this sin, I know at the end of the day that it was wrong. You guys might think that it's not big of a deal because at least I know that what I did was wrong. Somehow, I get to reflect in my actions. But no, it was the opposite. 
It made things a lot heavier. It made my sin bigger. It made me more sinful. The reason is because I knew that what I was doing was wrong. And yet, I still kept doing it. Day by day, my conscience was eating me up to the point that I felt so dirty, I felt so disgusted on myself, I felt so unworthy of everything. I felt like I'm not qualified and I shouldn't be accepted anymore in heaven and by God. With that being said, I was scared and shy to pray. I couldn't bring myself to pray, to ask for forgiveness, and to ask God to renew me. For a year or more, unfortunately, I didn't pray. I had no personal devotional, personal prayer, and it seemed like I distanced myself from God. During those times, I was like locked up in a room with not a single light in sight. Every time that I try and knelt by my bed, ready to pray, all I would do and all I could do was cry. No words were coming out of my mouth, just noise of crying. Each night that passed, I go back to the things that I learned from the sermons and the testimonies that I've heard. Then I remembered the parable of the lost son. I was the son. I chose to be where I was that, at that time. I chose to separate myself from God. Then I realized that I should and I wanted to go back. When I, got, when I have gathered all the courage that I can have, I finally knelt in prayer. I cried still. I cried and cried. But while I was crying, I was pleading for forgiveness. I confessed like I've never confessed before. I thank God for making me reflect on my actions, for making me cry every night to realize that what I did was wrong, for allowing me to experience such downfall, for giving me those emotions and obstacles that I cannot overcome, for giving me reasons to go back to Him. AUP was like a rehabilitation center to me. God surely answered my prayer by sending me to AUP. I asked God to renew my heart, to restart my soul, and to cleanse my whole being. Pastor Ituriaga once said, We can still be honest with God even in the darkest moments of our lives. And that hit me. Every day I try to be honest with God. I was, I was actually supposed to decline this invitation, but then I've learned that the theme embraced, and it was a sign for me. I still commit sins. I still experience and face obstacles in my relationship with God. I still doubt Him from time to time. But the greatest force that is holding me together is God's embrace. It pulls me back to Him every time space is getting in between. God's embrace that is always there, ready to take me back and doesn't want to let me go. With this, I remind and invite everyone once again for our prayer band in the morning. We have two sessions. The first session starts at 6.30 and the second session starts at 9.05. In the morning session, this will be held in the left wing of PIC. Then for our united prayer on the afternoon session, we also have two sessions. The first one is in 4 p.m. and the second one starts at 6.05 p.m. This will be held at the Lamb Shelter. With that, happy week of prayer. Hello everyone, good afternoon, and happy week of prayer to all of you. For our seasons of prayer this afternoon, our prayer focus, surrender any pride or rebellion and ask God to draw you back into a close relationship with Him. Also, let us all pray for medical students who are currently taking board exam this very moment. So here's the flow of our seasons of prayer this afternoon. First, the priest team will sing a short chorus. Second, the, the congregation will be given two minutes for individual prayer or by partner. Third one, 
I will conclude the prayer and also include the seasons of prayer. The praise team will sing to the end of prayer time. And to those who are able, let us all kneel. Mighty God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We praise you, dear Lord, for you have been so faithful to us this very moment. We're nearing to the end, Father God, of this week of prayer, and we humbly ask for your sustaining grace to each and every one of us. Thank you, dear Lord, for embracing us as one school, as one family, as one church, and, as, and most especially as, one, as individual, Father God. Thank you for having us in our lives. May we continue to surrender, dear Lord, ourselves to you and lower our pride or any rebellion. Father God, may we continue to have a close relationship to you. This is all we ask and pray. In the loving name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. We are back. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, technical team, for sorting out the problem. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. God has been good. Amen. God has been gracious to us. He has brought us to church one more time. And let me say good evening to those who are online, who are watching us, who are listening. It is our desire that the Lord will bless you as you listen. Because the purpose of worship is to lift up the name of Jesus. And as we have come to worship, we have come to praise Almighty God. Amen? You see, preaching is not the most important aspect of worship. Did you know that? Preaching is not the most important feature in worship. The reason we preach is because there is sin. If there was no sin, there would be no need to preach. But there has always been a need to praise. And after sin, we will be praising. Amen? There was praise before sin. There is praise after... While there is sin, as we are living in a sinful world, and uh, there will be praise after sin. But we are grateful for the preaching of the word because we continue to live in a sinful world. So my few questions before we get into the word of God, my few questions. Can you fill, the fill in the blank for me? Fill in the blank, 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 delete. Yes, I, I see that hand right there. Yes, that hand. All right, I'm, I'm taking the hand. Yes. Oh, okay, your hand was not up. Yes, you, right, okay. Yes. Scroll, select, and delete. Is that right? Okay, okay. Could you just raise your hand so that uh, the person who has the gift can see you. Just raise your hand. Amen. Amen. That one was very easy. Amen. Amen. Uh, the second question is, do not hold so tight to a friend that you are unable to see, A, how nice the person is, B, how kind the person is, C, that the person is not God's will for you. Yes, that hand, yes. C, A, C, C. Okay, okay, C. C is the correct answer. Okay, okay, yes, it is C, that a person is not God's will for you. All right, thank you very much. Can you put your hands together for... Amen, 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 amen. Amen. We are grateful to God. If you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn with me to the book of Luke, the 15th chapter. Luke, the 15th chapter. And we will consider a few verses beginning at verse 11. Verse 11. And he said, There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. There he squandered his property 
in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate. No one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. Verse 24. I'll just jump over a few verses to verse 24. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they begun to celebrate. Simple subject for the next few minutes. Saved at home. Saved at home. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Our oh God and our Heavenly Father, one more time I stand as an instrument in your hands, frail and sinful, but thou art righteous. And because you're righteous, Lord, I pray that you will take a live coal from your altar, place it upon my lips, so that the words that are spoken will be yours. Inspire encourage lead your children to the fountain of grace oh God we pray that when this message should have come to an end that we all will leave this place saying we have been with Jesus this is our prayer this is our asking in Jesus name Saved at home. Home is where the heart is. Everyone likes to be at a place where they feel at home. Some people do not like to be away from home too long. Many of us look forward to go home. I've been in the Philippines almost five years, and I'm looking forward to go home. Some people get disturbed when home is away from them for too long. Home Today is where we need to be, home with Jesus. Sin has robbed us from that home. But thank God this home is available today. Because our Jesus 2,000 years ago went back to the cross of Calvary. There he laid down his life so that you and I can be at home. That's why John says in Revelation, the 21st chapter and verse 1, I saw a new heaven and a new home. As we traverse this sinful world, we recognize that one of these days our Savior will come to take us home. Here in Luke chapter 15 verse 11 
through the 24, Jesus shares a parable that speaks to what it means to have the free gift of salvation. It is a parable that is often called the prodigal son, the parable of the prodigal son. But if you look at the parable closer, you will realize that the emphasis of the, this parable is not the son who leaves, but the son who stays. If I were to give it a title, I would say the parable of the two lost sons. But today, brothers and sisters, our topic speaks to a person or persons who have come to a stop in their life and recognize that home is where they ought to be. Home is where salvation is. Leaving home. Verses 11 and 12 says, and he said, if you could put the scripture on this screen, thank you very much as well. And he said, there was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. For the son to ask his father for his portion was simple a wish for his father to die because it was customary for a father whose power was failing to surrender his goods and property to his sons. In such a case, the sons were bound to maintain the father until he's dead. In the case found in Luke chapter 15, the father was not dying. The son does not stay home until the father is dead because the son has a different perspective. The younger son is more interested in his father's property than he's interested in a relationship with his father. In his attitude, he pictures the lost sinner. The lost person takes no thought for God. Their attitude towards God is, give me, give me. They want his ear, his food, his water, his time his world, but they do not want him to be involved in their lives. Every day that people live upon the earth, they consume the resources that God created for them. Brothers and sisters, not many days later, the younger gathered everything and he marched out from the loving arms of Jesus, marched on from home, leaving home, leaving his father's protection, leaving his father's guidance on his way, merry way, leaving home, leaving home for a better life, he thought. Leaving home for a pleasure, a, a life of pleasure. Leaving home because home has rules and regulations. Home has discipline. But the young man has left home. Brothers and sisters, we want to build our kingdom here on this earth. We want to do as we like here on this earth. We don't want God. We just want his possession. Sometimes our attitude depicts this. Our attitude shows that we are more interested in getting to the top 
than getting to heaven. Self is the boss and our desire is dry is the driving force. We are more concerned about our own pleasure, more concerned about what we can get, more concerned about how we enjoy lives, our life than we are concerned about a relationship with Jesus. But that kind of a lifestyle is wasted life. Luke chapter 15 verses 13 and 16. The Bible says not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had. He took a journey into a far country. Far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. The Bible says, so he, w he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. Took his journey into a far country. He went far into sin, far from the peaceful shore of God's grace, far from the mercies of God, far into a life of sin, far from the voice of God, wasted in riotous living. Riotous living means a life that totally given over to a life of wickedness and sin. The Greek word that is used to translate it, riotous, is the word asotos, meaning living in a wild, abandoned, reckless, and loose life. A life of sin, brothers and sisters, is a life of ways. A life of sin is a life in need. A life of sin is a life with Satan. A life of sin is a life outside of a relationship with God. The question today is how do you live your life? How are you living your life? How are you living the life that God has given you? The Bible tells us in verse 14 of Luke chapter 15 that the prodigal son this son who was left home has spent all after he has used up all his resources a famine arose because eventually his money ran out his friends run out the far country a land of wine women and song had become a land of weeping, worry, and sorrow. A land of party has become a land of loneliness. A land of power has become a land of powerlessness. A land of wealth has become a land of waste. A land of popularity has soon become a land of shame and disgrace. A land of friends becomes a land of enemies. He found out too late that sin carries with it a high price tag. Sin brings separation. But while the son is away, the father is at the same place where the son left him. The father is looking out. The father is waiting. The father with open arms is looking for his son to return home. The father knows his son. The father is still looking to see if there is a glimpse, a glimmer of hope of his son. Oh, brothers and sisters, this boy finds himself broke 
and alone, miles away from a father who had done nothing but love him. By his own actions, he finds himself separated from that father by a wide gulf of sin, pride, and ignorance. When the party is over, when the sex is over, when the dance is over, when the music stop playing, when the money is all gone, when reality kicks in and the mind is confused, oh, not knowing what to do, where to turn, how to turn, who to turn to, and how to turn. The Bible says there is a great famine that arose, a famine of satisfaction, a famine of love, a famine of friends, a famine of being cared for, a famine of a great need. He was hired out to a citizen of that country. Notice that his boss is of the same place where he lost all. Satan is that boss today. Satan is the one who hire us out when we leave home. When we leave the hands of Almighty God, we hire ourselves out with the devil. Satan is the boss of that country. The question is today, are you hired out to Satan? The boy had access at home, but left home to be hired out to Satan. Everything he needs were at home, but he left home thinking it would be better on the other side. There are times as children of God we leave home thinking that life will get better, thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. When we look out on the other side, it looks as if our friends who are over on the other side are really enjoying themselves. And so we leave home, but we get to a place where we recognize that home is green a home is a better home is where the heart is home is the place to be Satan hire us out oh brothers and sisters when you realize that the Lord is your shepherd and that you are in no want you, you are in no need when you're at home but being hired out the boss sent him to feed pigs a Jew does not feed pigs the, the Bible says that he was in want even though he was hired out he was in want of food to feed his stomach even though he was hired out. As long as you are hired out to Satan, you will be in need. As long as Satan is your boss, you will be in need. Because Satan cannot uh, fill the emptiness of your heart. You need the creator, the one who formed you, who created you, brought, bring you, who has brought you forth and has brought you into this world. You need the creator to satisfy your needs. But brothers and sisters, understand today that people, things, objects cannot replace God. Do not fool yourself that you can get enjoyment, true happiness 
outside of a relationship with Jesus. You may have joy for a moment, joy for a time, but very soon it runs out and you realize that there is an emptiness on the inside. There is something on the inside that is yearning after genuine happiness. There is something on the inside that is saying, I cannot stay where I am any longer. There is something on the inside that says, I cannot continue to live a life of sin. There is something on the inside that says, I got to go back home. There is something on the inside that says, Lord, I need you. There is something crying out on the inside. The young man left home thinking that life would be better. But thank God, the Bible says, when he came to himself. I'm so glad that we can come to ourselves today. Oh, coming home, coming home. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servant have more enough bread but I perish here with hunger. Oh, the son came to himself. The son who left is coming home. The son is coming home. He is coming home. He is coming home. He is coming home, battered and bruised, but he's coming home. He's coming home as a drunkard, but he's coming home. He's coming home as a fornicator, but he's coming home. As an adulterer, but he's coming home. The son is coming home. The son is coming home. He has left home, but thank God he's coming home. He's hopping, but he's coming home. He's broken, but he's coming home. He is hungry, but he's coming home. He's coming home. He's coming home. He's coming home. Home where his heart is is he is coming home oh brothers and sisters he's coming home he got home i said he came home he came home to a party he came home to a celebration he came home battered and bruised but he came home rejected and dejected but he came home he came home he came home to a family that loves him he came home to people who care for him he came home oh he came home the father wrapped him put his robe on him. No longer is he a fornicator. No longer is he adulterer. No longer is he one who has stolen something. No longer is his sins are shown. The father not only did he put a robe on him, but the father put shoes on his feet. Because in the ancient world, when a guest comes to your home, the guest remove his, his, his shoe to indicate that he's not the owner of the home. The father said, you have always been the owner of the home because what I possess, you possess. Oh, praise God. Our brothers and sisters, understand that when you come home, when you come home, what God has become yours 
he put a ring on his finger. He's welcoming him back into the family. Oh, brothers and sisters. Oh, he says, for this my son was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and is found. They began to be merry, dead in sin, but now alive in Jesus. Come home, come home. Somebody need to come home today. Somebody who has been battered and bruised. Somebody who has been dejected. Somebody who others told you that you will never rise. Somebody who has been in sin. You have committed adultery, fornication, but God loves you. Let me tell you something. There is no sin that is greater than the other. They all spell S-I-N. Your sin may not be her sin. Her sin may not be your sin. But all of us, from the pulpit to the pew, we all have a pass. We all have a pass. It is not how you fall, but it's how well you rise. It is not what you did yesterday, but what are you doing today? You may have fallen yesterday, stumbled, fall in sin, whatever that sin is. Today you can straighten your shoulder and you can say, I am not defined by my past because I'm coming home today. I'm leaving a sinful life and I'm coming to Jesus. Come home. From where you sit, from where you sit, I invite you to stand with the preacher right now. Come home. Come home. I invite you to stand. It's time to go home. It's going home time. It's going home time. It's time to go home. Because home is where Jesus is. Home is where the loving arms of Jesus. It's time to come home. Home from a life of sin. Home, home, home. Leave your seat and come home. Come home to Jesus. Some of you once were walking with Jesus, but you have slipped up along the way. You have left Jesus. But today, come, come. If you hear his voice, come. Walk out of your seat. Come, 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 come. Come down, come down. Let's go home to Jesus today. Let's go home. Come, 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 come. Come, come, young and old, come. We are coming home to Jesus. We all are battered and bruised. From the pulpit to the pew, we all have fallen short. But today, to your way, will my, with my whole heart, I agree. My answer will be, yes, Lord. Yes, come home. Come home, come home. Don't look to your right, don't look to your left. Come home to Jesus. Battered and bruised, but come home to Jesus. Come home, press closer to the altar. Press to the altar, press to the altar so that there be space for others because at home everyone every single person can hold there is a space for every man and for every woman come home today come home come home come home come home lumapit kai esus Come to Jesus. Come home. Come home. Your past should not define you. All of us make mistakes every day of our lives. Let nobody condemn you because your mistake is not their mistake. For judgment belongs to God. Straighten up your shoulder today and walk with dignity for you are not defined 
by where you were yesterday. You're defined by where you are today. Come home as we sing, as we sing. As he sing, I invite you to still keep coming. I left home to build my own life. Travel far and wide, searching for comfort without your light. Chasing the pleasures in the world I have built, left me broken in. I've come to see that the best for me lies in your embrace. So here I am, Lord, make me anew to live for your glory, your glory alone. You are my strength, my solid ground. You are true. Is beyond the reach of your love, you say, my child, you're not alone. Do not be afraid, for you are my own. Now that I'm home, where I belong, I know I am restored. Surrounded by love and wrought in your grace, I am now embraced. So here I am, Lord, make me anew to live for your glory, your glory alone. You are my strength, my solid ground. You are true, you are there without doubt. Not the My child, you're not alone. Do not be afraid, for you are my own. Do not be afraid, for you. alone this evening because God is with you he loves you so much that he spared your life he spared my life not because we have done some great things but because of his great love there is nothing about us that we can use to boast about where we are in life if there is anything you have achieved since you came to this place called earth it's not sufficient to boast that you belong here it is only by the blood of Jesus why we are alive today it's by his grace and his mercies that has been keeping us and today I'm gonna pray if there is still some persons who want to press a little closer to the altar do so if you want to press a little closer I'm gonna pray today I invite you to come come home come home I give you two minutes to press a little closer press a little closer the songwriter says burdens are lifted at Calvary Jesus 
is very near. Jesus is very near because he's standing by your side. He has never left you. When the son left home, God was by the son's side. But he was waiting for the son to come home. Home is not geographical. It's a state. It is changing your state from a life of sin to a life wrapped up and tied up with Almighty God. And today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. For he loves you so much that he died on the cross of Calvary. You and I were on his mind way back at Calvary. Your name was on his mind for he died for you and I. If there was no sin, he would not have died. But because we are sinners, deserving death, eternal death, he chose to taste death for us. Separation from his father in order to save us. Rose from the grave with power in his hands and he says, my child, come home. Come home for I have purchased home for you. And in St. John chapter 14, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Because if you believe in God, you believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'm coming again. In the Greek language, the text does not say, I will come again. The text says, if I go, I am coming again. In other words, his coming is so urgent that you cannot put him off today, hoping to find him tomorrow, because tomorrow might be too late. I'm coming again. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Our God and our Heavenly Father, the one who spoke this world into existence, the one who from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God, we come humbling ourselves before you wretched and sinful we are but we come tattered and torn we are but we come to you O God for there is no other friend that can save us but Jesus and so Lord your people have walked from their seats. They left their seats and they have come down to the altar indicating that they are coming home. Some of them have left home but praise God like the prodigal son they have come home. With your arms open wide Jesus I pray that you will place it upon them. Remind them, Lord, that you died for them. Remind them that their future is in your hands. Cover them, Lord. Hold them, Lord. For the devil, as a roaring lion, will seek to snatch them. But today, Jesus, hold them one more time. Keep them in your hands, Jesus. Keep them in your hands, O oh God. As they make up their mind to follow you 
into the water grave of baptism there be destruction there be naysayers but oh God may your loving arms prevail and remind them that a life lived with Jesus is a life lived in the way it ought to be lived for the man or the woman who walks with you we are so happy will not walk alone we praise you and we tell you thanks in Jesus name let the people of God say Amen God bless you God bless you walk good walk good sleep good the Lord bless you the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. God bless you. Have a great evening. God bless you. So here I am, Lord, make me anew to live for your glory, your glory alone. You are my strength, my solid ground. You are true. Okay, a special announcement to all candidates for baptisms that who already decide to be baptized. So, uh, please see me in the right wing uh, beside AVR. So, thank you so much. See you there.